Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another card making video. Today I am having fun with a new release, the August release by my favorite things. And instead of sharing an unboxing video, I am going to share three cards trying to put as much of those new products into action. The August release by my favorite things includes lots of products that are perfect for Halloween. Everything just like always is super adorable. And I'm going to share two Halloween cards today as well as a birthday card. By the way, I'm back home, summer vacation is finally over, and although this is quite sad, I came back to a house full of packages with lots of new releases and products, and I have lots and lots of new ideas to share with you. So here I'm starting with my favorite things new release today. This die set is called Everything But The Broom. I used colored cardstock to cut out all the different pieces that I want for my card, and I made sure that I went with greens, purples, and oranges, which is a combo that you can never go wrong when we are trying to create a Halloween card. For the detail on the boots, I used a silver cardstock, and if you notice, at the moment I did die cut the pot out of a purple cardstock, but as I was designing the card later on, I decided that I wanted a purple for the background, and it wasn't standing out as much, so you will see what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to make the socks. For the socks, you have to go on every other one of the indentations and stick one of the little pieces. Now, I have to confess that I absolutely love die sets. I may have more fun playing with dies than I have uh, with uh, stamping, I believe. And um, this is uh, right up my alley. I absolutely love this die set. And of course, you don't have to use colored cardstock. You can cut out everything out of white cardstock and use your coloring markers to color in all the little bits and pieces. Now I'm going to stick the legs with the boots together and uh, for doing all the sticking I did use my Burly Art glue. I love this glue just because it has a fine tip and it is perfect for all those little pieces. Now here is where I changed my mind for the pot. I decided to cut it out from silver and one more time from black and I'm going to cut out only the legs from the silver pot and stick them on top of the black one just to add something extra, a little bit of shine. And then for the liquid for the inside of the pot I did cut out the bubbles and the liquid out of a green glitter cardstock just to add even more sparkle on a really fun card. Now for the background, I'm going with a purple and I'm using one of the double stitched rectangle dies to cut out a panel. These rectangle dies are from the previous release, but uh, they are one of those dies that I keep on using throughout the year, since I always like to create panels for my cards. I'm going over the stencil with my Distress Oxide ink and the stencil is uh, the Slimline English brick wall, just to add something extra on an otherwise plain background. I went tone on tone so it is very subtle, however you will see the design on the close-up photos. I'm going to work on my sentiment now, I will white emboss it on a black piece of cardstock. I'm using one sentiment from the itty bitty booze, this is super adorable and I absolutely love when a font is very very thin. I did prep my cardstock with my anti-static powder and that prevents the embossing powder to stick all over the place. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment by using my Versamark ink. I'm going to apply bright white embossing powder. This is fine embossing powder, which is perfect when you try to emboss a sentiment with such small fonts. This is going to ensure that it's going to pick up all the detail. Then I die cut the sentiment with a very thin sentiment die and then I'm using my paper trimmer to trim out the space on the left and on the right of my sentiment, making sure that they are nice and even. And now finally I have all the elements ready and I can put together my panel. Now if you follow me, you already know that I love dimension, I cannot stay away from it, so for every one of those elements I did use foam tape at the back. I also placed the sentiment strip down and then placed the boots on top of it providing kind of a ground for my witch. Always remember that you can make the exact same card by switch up the colors. So for example, instead of having a purple background, you can have an orange one and switch up the colors on the pot and the socks. Just keep in mind that if you use the three colors 
orange, purple and uh, green, you will have the perfect Halloween card no matter which way you use them. I'm going to stick the little bubbles coming out of my pot. And there is a die in the set that helps you cut out all those little bubbles. However, if you wish so, you can use gems for an extra sparkle. I placed my panel on top of an orange card base and here is a finished look on the first card for today. For my next card I'm going for a birthday card and uh, this is the Smell the Cake stamp set, super adorable, I absolutely love those dogs with the balloons as well as the girl and uh, there are many such adorable designs in this new release, they are all by Tiddly Inks, make sure to check them out, they are just amazing designs, if you love coloring you will have lots of fun using those. So for uh, my birthday card I'm going with one of the dogs that is flying with the balloons. I'm going to color everything with my alcohol markers. I tend to do quick coloring with alcohol markers. I don't like spending too much time on that. I prefer designing most. And uh, for that I found that uh, they work great for me. The Triblends by Spectrum Noir. I absolutely love the fact that you get all three shades that you need. Light, medium and dark in one barrel. So I don't have to go through my stash of markers and find markers that match together. There are amazing YouTubers out there where you can uh, follow them for learning how to blend with alcohol markers. And I usually cut out the part where I am doing the coloring, however I do get a lot of questions about that. So here is how I colored the balloons. I did add a touch of uh, light grey on the dog, I did want some shadow but at the same time I wanted the dog to be white. I'm using the matching die to die cut, my focal point, and then I'm also going to use a, a cloud die to cut out a couple of clouds that I can use on my uh, layout. And this is just a bunch of clouds that I have from previous releases that I keep on using again and again for my layouts. Here is another die that I keep on using and you have seen me using it again and again for my designs. I absolutely love creating windows and this stitched window die is one of my favorites. I have it for years and keep on uh, using it again and again. So here is my card base in blue which is going to work as a sky through the window. I'm temporarily placing that white frame on top of my card base and I will... Um, Decide where I want the clouds to go, stick them down. I will place the window frame on top using foam tape at the back and then I'm going to stick my little dog. Now uh, this would make a great uh, shaker card as well if you want to have little bits and pieces shaking inside that window. However I went with a simpler version as I was going for a clean and simple card for this one. There is plenty of room below the window to add your sentiment, you can stop it definitely. I decided to go with a die cut happy birthday. This is the hanging happy birthday. I'm only going to use the happy birthday part but however there are dies here that you can use to suspend the happy birthday and have it moving on top of your card. This die set gives you both the outline as well as every letter individually. I did cut out the outline out of white cardstock and then on top I'm sticking letter by letter that I die cut from silver glitter cardstock. Here is a close up look on the finished card and as always I'm going to share a couple of photos. And I have one more Halloween card to share with you. 
For my third and last card for today, I'm using the Sweet Little Spell. Again, a design from the Tiddly Inks collection. There is something about the collection that uh, draws me so much. I absolutely love those designs. And I'm going to stamp the girl. I'm using Extreme Black Ink, which is uh, alcohol market friendly. And as I normally do, I'm going to grab my three blends and color in my little witch. And as I'm coloring, I will make sure that I will use purple, green and orange on my image to make it look perfect for Halloween. And I'm not going to show you how I did all the coloring, just some quick coloring with my three blends will do the trick. The fun part about having three blends is that I don't have a huge collection, just 10 or 15 markers will do the trick and it's not so intimidating to try and choose the correct colors. And with the magic of video editing, my girl is uh, colored and cut out. And now I'm going to create the background. For that, I'm using a stencil from a previous release that gives you that shape, which is completely random. I absolutely love this one. And I'm going to create a background for my girl by using my Distress Oxide inks. The main two colors that I'm playing with are Blueprint Sketch, which is the bluish one, and the Wilted uh, Violet, which matches perfectly with the color of uh, the dress. So I'm going to go back and forth adding those colors on my background and since they are very juicy you will find that they blend really nicely and easily together. If you are wondering I'm working on a Nina Solar White cardstock which is very smooth and helps the stress oxide inks to blend beautifully. I like to go back again and again until I'm happy with the blending. And I'm not loading my blending tool too much with ink. I like to apply thinner layers and do that again and again for a smoother effect. Now, I am also going to bring in black suit, which is going to make sure that this is going to look darker at the end. I'm mainly going to apply it on the edges and then I will go back with the blue and the purple just to blend that black in together with the rest of the colors. I absolutely love the result and trust me, it's so much easier to get that smooth blending with the oxides instead of the original Distress inks. And when I'm creating a background with Distress oxides, I cannot stay away from water. So I have to apply some uh, splashes. This is water which is going to react with the ink and it's going to lift some color and make it lighter. I absolutely love the design. I'm going to use a cloth to pick up any excess. And now I can lift the stencil so we can see what we have up to now. I did use foam tape at the back of my girl. I'm going to stick her on top of the panel and I absolutely love how the panel matches the color of her dress. Now I just have to add some sparkle on the background. For that I'm going with gems. These are my Pinkfresh Studios gems that I keep on using again and again. I'm going to add some dots of glue at the background and stick them down. There are three different sizes of gems in this little pot, so I'm going to use all of them. For the sentiment, again, I used one of the sentiments from the Itty Bitty Boo's little stamp set. And here are some close-up photos on the finished card for today. Just like always, you will find a full list of supplies of everything I used down below in the description area, as well as on my blog. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for visiting and I'll see you all next time.